They came back against Bournemouth. They won the game 3-2. There's been some pressure on Antonio Conte of late due to recent results. It looked like it was going to be another defeat. It ended in a win. Do we give credit to him for his changes here? No. No. How do we... What do you mean give it changes? I mean, the, the, why didn't he start him in the first place? Those are his best players. So, I mean, okay, eventually he brought on the Dyers, the Bentancur, who's been their, their best player. I mean, I give him no credit. And what happened here? I mean, he got away with one, I suppose, uh, but he, he has... So your view is that he got his line of prog in the first place? Well, of course. I mean, he was looking at Olympic Marseille, right? I mean, uh, midweek. I mean, he was trying to save some of his best players. I mean, you look at that, you know, the back three, you'll never see them again in, in a formation uh, uh, like this, right? Uh, I mean, no Christi no, no Romero again at all. I don't was he even in the squad? I don't think he was. Uh, no Eric Dyer, who hasn't missed a minute, I don't think, the entire season so far. No Ben Tancur, who was absolutely wonderful uh, throughout the season so far. Yes, I mean, this is a team that wants to win on all fronts. So he he thought it was going to be enough to stay in the game and, and somehow win it. So, of course, he brought his best players in the second half because you're 2-0 down. So I'm not giving him any credit. I would have done the same. Okay, you would have done the same thing, right? I mean... I, I no, I will say, though... I think was it the Manchester United game? He didn't make changes. He he kept going the way he was. Maybe he did much later in the game. I think it was that game. And I remember on FC, Craig Burley was annoyed about that. So I'd be interested. Well, he had a, but I don't remember the lineup, but I bet you he had his best lineup on the pitch already. So, I mean, he didn't make changes because, you know, the, the depth of that squad isn't there, right? So, uh, it, no, I mean, no, we can't give him credit for that. I mean... Those players are supposed to come in. Yes, they they contributed and score goals. Set pieces, as we know, he has his favorite, uh, you know, set piece uh, uh, manager uh, back. They're very good at that, and we saw that. I think was in Dyer and even on Bentancur. I think Bentancur first shot was blocked, and then he followed up on that, if I remember correctly. Uh, but but no, I mean he he got away with one. He he's in church right now, Antonio Conte. I, I'm I promise you, right after the game, if he doesn't go, if he didn't go to church and thank God for it. Uh, yeah, quietly he'd surely admit it because that looked like a game that wasn't winnable a draw may he would have been happy very happy with a play there <laughs> you're the express <clears throat> excuse me you're well, the I'm not, not expert but, no, I, but I just, you're the express is pep guardiola today you want more from conte it's not enough you still want more from him even though they had this comeback win listen what no, he's talked just, about he's talked about pieces that he needs we don't even know if he's going to be in there he talked about the needing to be Two or three more transfer windows to get this team right. The upcoming transfer window in January, what does he need? Look, first and foremost, I think the biggest issue right now with, with Antonio Conte is Antonio Conte. <laughs> because, because, you know, he hasn't signed a new contract yet. He's smart. He knows how to play with Levy. The only play, the only person in the world that knows how to pull the strings with Levy. And I Bet you Levy doesn't like it, right? Because he loves to be in control. Uh, the contract's there. Uh, I don't think, obviously, he's going to sign in until the very, uh, uh, you know, till late because that's his way of putting pressure, right? If you, I don't get what I want, I want something in January, right? And, and, and of course, you ask me what that is, is, is wingbacks. I mean, he doesn't have to play Antonio Conte ball. You have to have wing backs, and he doesn't have. There's no way that they're even close to the quality. I've talked about Cessignon. I've talked about uh, Emerson Royale. Not good enough for that. Uh, um, not for the biggest competitions as well. Doherty plays there. We all know he's not a wing back, and Antonio Conte plays him uh, out of uh, necessity. We saw a little bit of br brilliance from uh, Petisic, right, on one of the goals and cross yeah, as he came much. in. But but I think we also understand that he can't do that every three days in all those competitions. So that's what he's going to do. The the one worry I, I, I have with Antonio Conte because of, of course Juventus' job may be open, and obviously there's going to be. Which I feel was talked about more before this result in the lead up to this game. We were we're hearing a lot about the Juve job and would Conte just abandon ship at Spurs anyway to go and take that? My, my issue with him not signing the contract, and I do believe he's going to stretch that because he's going to use that as leverage, is also that what message does that, does that send to everybody else, right? Because right now, again, if, you, if you're if uh, you human song and if you are uh, um, Harry Kane, you're saying, well, if he's not committing, I'm out of here. There's already rumors about Son. There's a number of teams that want him, right? And, and obviously, they're probably having some conversation with Antonio Conte. I don't know how open he is to his own players, what his plans may be. 
But I think in a way, he the longer he doesn't sign, the more this team is going to be unsettled and could crumble if he doesn't sign. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.